and we are live. Welcome to another session of Riding the Bear. The session is brought to you by the Sky Labs and Better Ecosystem. My name is Ryan, and I am so glad to be your host today. As you're hopping on board, as you're plugging in, go ahead and drop a high hello. I'll let everybody know who's here. We got Carl with us today. Welcome, Carl. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Over the last year, over 16,000 crypto projects have launched. And how is it possible to not only find, but also manage, but also you know profit and research all of these projects? This is exactly what we do here in the Better Ecosystem. We utilize crowdsourcing to save time, energy, and money in the crypto space. See, we work together to find projects that have potential while at the same time, we bring up warnings, red flags, and about projects that maybe bring up concern. And I tell you what, for the last six months, we've recorded over 100 live sessions just like this, where we support the community in navigating the CrowdX calendar, finding your next 2x to 100x crypto gem, and even avoiding some questionable projects. And we're going to do both of those things today. We're going to look at some CrowdX calendar, we're going to look for some projects, and we're going to talk about projects that may be questionable maybe questionable so again welcome we got tj in the house with us we got sheep coat well welcome welcome hope you guys are doing fantastic tj's from iceland very cool very cool so i wanted to start today's session uh with an, an update okay who remembers all our, our good old friends uh snack inu okay taha welcome welcome who remembers snack inu from last week we looked at it last week and uh you know, there were a lot of things that uh, were left to be desired, left to be desired about this project. Um, but, uh, you know, there was a lot of things that, that didn't check our boxes for this project, but they actually ended up having a, a decent launch. Um, I believe the the uh, the listing price was the same as the pre-sale price. I'm not going to take the time to go look at it. So we're just going to go from a listing price. But all the way up to the top, they had a um, ATH of a 2.6x. Okay, ATH of a 2.6x. And then this right here started happening. There was a dip. Okay, Jackie remembers Jackie remembers Snack Inu, our, our good old friends, oh, good old Snack Tech. <laughs> oh no, oh no, Sheep Cup put his life savings in Snack Tech. Well, Sheep Cup, I hope you did it right here. Okay, and here's why. Here's one of the things that, that I wanted to bring up as we as we talk about this project, not necessarily this project specifically, but projects in general to support you in coming up with a game plan. <clears throat> now, uh, the consensus on the call was none of us were really all that excited about Snack Tech. We weren't excited about Snack Inu because it lacked a lot of things. <laughs> it lacked like everything. <laughs> It lacked um, all the stuff that we would think would be a, uh, a good project was was lacking from this project, okay? And what I often talk about is what we're doing is we are stacking probabilities, okay? There's things that we're looking for and we're stacking probabilities um, and sometimes projects go in our favor and sometimes they don't, no matter what the probabilities are, okay? See, so you have zero control over the outcome. Okay, you have zero control over the outcome. You have 100% control over your due diligence look at, looking into a project. And when you stack the probabilities and you're like, you know what, there's more positives over here than, than negatives, um, you, and you roll with it like that, okay? And one of the things that I want you to really understand from this session this is one of the most important things. Just because we may have a lot of positive things over here. Let me just go ahead and uh, let me exit out of this just real quick. Let me pull up the icon here. And let me go over with a smiley face. Here we go. We'll go with a smiley face right there. And we'll go with a sad face right there okay all right let's go back full screen mode all right so we're stacking probabilities okay when you find something that you like let's say that uh, this is the like side you find something you dislike this is the dislike side okay you're saying you know what i really like this over here okay 
And if, for example, you're, you're doing your research, you're doing your due diligence, and you're finding that you're getting more things over here, you either make a choice and say, you know what, I don't want to keep looking, or you keep doing your research until this turns into this. Okay, that's your choice. That's up to you. This is what you have control over. That's it. You have no control over who's going to show up at launch. You have no control over who's going to sell at launch. You have no control over what the team is going to do. You have no control over what the marketing is going to do. You have no control over anything except you doing your due diligence in the beginning, stacking probabilities in your favor, and making a decision to say, you know what, I believe based on what I'm looking for, based on my criteria, based on my own personal strategy, based on the strategy of the scout I'm following, I believe this has a possibility and potential for me to hit my goals. And then you opt to get into the pre-sale. That's it. That's, that's it. But at that moment, you accept the fact that there's no guarantee and price can tank after that. Even though it checks all your boxes, you could have every one of these boxes checked. This is the best project you've ever seen in your life. Okay. And guess what? It may not do what you think it should do. It is what it is. Part of being a responsible investor is understanding, hey, you know what? It checked my boxes. It may not do what I want it to do. It's okay. Why? Because you're not over leveraged. Why? Because you're using proper risk management. It all works out at the end. It's no big deal. But here's what I want to express and explain. It's kind of like a Venn diagram, um, but think about it like this. Okay, so we have this box right here, scam. Okay, is the project a scam? So the checklist that we go through we're basically trying to figure out, is it a legit project or not? Is it legit? Are we finding major red flags, major warnings, major concerns? And that will help us realize whether it's a scam or not. Okay? So that initial checklist helps us filter out projects that could be incredibly risky, incredibly dangerous, and likely a scam. So we avoid things that way. Okay? Now we have over here, this box over here, Long term. Okay. That checklist also plays into that mode of long term plays. Okay. It's a long term play. Meaning, if there's a quality team behind it, there's a quality community, there's real utility, there's real development going on. We know that they have the potential. It's likely, it's possible. We're stacking probabilities that they can make it through the seven day period, through the 30 day period, through the 60, 90, 180 day year down the road. Okay, that's what these check boxes are doing. What this checklist, what the stacking probabilities does not do is this right here. Let me move this over. Short term. Whoops. Short term. <clears throat> From looking at all these projects, auditing thousands of projects, what we look for can filter out scam projects and help us find projects that could last long term. What this has no bearing on, what's once you eliminate the fact that it's a scam, it has no bearing on the short term success. Meaning, it is a wild card. You have no idea, okay? The most control you have right here, is it a scam? We got that out of the way. Does it have potential to be long term? We got that out of the way. Right here, this is, anyone can guess. <laughs> you know, you can flip a coin. You could flip a coin and say, is it going to be profitable in the short term? Who knows? Who knows? Okay? Who knows? I've seen absolutely crazy projects with no value whatsoever do well in the short term. Okay? 
projects that you and I have written off do well in the short term. The only thing that Snack Tech, Snack Inu had going for it was it had this really extensive list of call groups going on. Okay, this is a really extensive list of call groups and some reputable names in there. That was it. Everything else was a ghost town. And look, it, it you could have actually got a 2.6x if this fit your risk, risk tolerance. Okay, if it didn't fit your risk tolerance, you're not worried about it. No sweat. So now here's what I would here's what I would say. So element of the control stacking probabilities. Okay. People always talk about buying the dip. I've brought this up before. What is a dip? It is, a, is it a 50% pullback? Is it a 10%? Is it 75%? Is it dropping below pre-sale price? So right here, let's just say this was a pre-sale price, this line right here. Now right here, you're waiting for that. Is that where you get in? I don't know. What I'm willing to say is when it comes to buying the dip, I would say this stuff right here matters. Okay. This right here matters. When it comes to buying the dip, this stuff matters. When it comes to short term success, this does not matter. It's going to do what it's going to do. You have zero control over it. I fully believe after watching these things that this stuff is so important. When it comes to buying the dip and long-term proje uh, project success. Buying dip. <laughs> okay. It's helpful to know who the team is, what they're actually developing, what they're actually doing. What does it actually matter? Is it gonna is it gonna matter? The the reason I'm bringing this stuff up is really simple. Let's look at a uh, an hour chart here. Okay, my box has got got a little bit of mess a little, a little bit messed up here, but it's all right. What's up, Crypto Dread? Hope you're doing well, brother. Here's where this stuff matters. When it comes to long-term success of projects and buying the dip, you better believe that the stuff we talk about absolutely matters. Why? Let's just take a look at old uh, Snack Tech and see what they're up to. Their last project post said, I was off due some, to some health issues, but I've had but I've had rest of the team working in here 24 seven in my absence, just read the chat. And after checking the chart, I don't think there's any way we can continue with this rather than using these funds we have left for marketing, which wouldn't have any impact on the chart uh, like this. I'd rather that we sort out some refunds for people who held on till the end and didn't FUD. Basically the project's done. Okay. Project's done. What am I saying? I'm saying long-term success, long-term success, the team, uh, who the team is, the vision, the roadmap, uh, revenue generation, um, the contract, in-house dev team, all those things are probabilities that you can stack that will drastically import, impact the project's long-term success and why it would be worth buying a dip. Okay. I believe that this just happened to be, there was a little bit of hype and they got a 2.6 X and there'd be no reason to buy this dip because it, it's empty. Like there's, there's, there's nothing here in this project. Okay. So when you ask the question, when you ask the question, I ask you guys all the time, what is a dip? How do you know? I just would invite you to look at this as part of your volume of launches. Look at projects that stack up really well and have great ideas and use cases and excitement and great teams. And even if it struggles at launch, it is, it is still a possibility that the project could do well because it has the strength of something real where this is incredibly risky. I would venture to say that this is potentially more risky 
um, buying the dip on a project like this is probably more risky than buying the pre-sell. The pre-sell, at least there's some hype and excitement and momentum. <laughs> But again, the only way you're going to know about this is by uh, doing your volume of launches and developing your KSP. Okay? If that makes sense, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Go ahead and drop a like on the video, uh, letting me know that that makes sense and that clicks for you. Okay? Just to wrap it up again, when we talk about these things and check the, the boxes that we're looking for and, and the check marks, we're trying to figure out one is it a probability that's a scam? Once we filter that out, those lists have no indication and bearing on whether the project is going to do good in the short term. However, I strongly believe it has a high chance of supporting whether the project is going to do in the long run and whether or not it is okay to buy a dip. Okay? So in your volume of launches, in your own research, be sure to look for that. Be sure to document that and see so you can learn. Okay, does it add up? So if we can look at CareCoin, for example. CareCoin had a bit of a, I don't think I have it on my, my watch list over here. Uh, CareCoin had a bit of a rough, a rough start. CareCoin V2, let's see if we can, uh, let me just go find the Telegram group. CareCoin, oh wait, over here, right, right here. CareCoin had a bit of a rough start. <clears throat> Let's look at chart. There we go. Chart. You know, CareCoin checked a lot of boxes. CareCoin looked really good. It checked a lot of boxes. It made a lot of sense. I really like the team behind it. You know, they had massive success in the beginning period where, um, where, uh, where, you know, they just got some hype and, you know, just timing of the market and things like that. Um, but like they got a lot of stuff going on. Okay. And so, you know, they're still struggling. I mean, I think they're barely, they're just below pre-sale right now. Okay. But like, there's a very big difference when, if you were to choose to buy the dip on CareCoin, there's a very big difference between buying the dip on CareCoin and buying the dip on Snack Tech, Snack Inu. Okay. If that makes sense. Give me a thumbs up and, 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 and know why. I mean, you may not remember, but we, we did cover CareCoin on the call. Uh, so if you do remember that episode, that session, uh, this is this question is specifically for you, okay? Do you see the difference on why buying the dip for a project like Snack Inu is incredibly risky, where buying the dip for a project like CareCoin is less risky, and it's all about stacking the probabilities in your favor? Okay, go ahead and give me a thumbs up if, if that makes sense. Okay, Jackie says 100%. Perfect. Perfect. And so like with CareCoin, for example, yeah, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm an investor in the project. I'd like it to see it go up, but you know what? I'm here for the ride. I'm here. I'm here. And guess what? There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it checked my boxes. I'm enrolled with it. I believe in what's going on. And you know what? When it hits my take profits... I'll, I'll take out a, par a portion and I'll let the rest ride. That's my game plan. I'm not losing any sleep at all. Okay? If a project tanks and leaves and quits and they don't refund me, no sleep lost. If a project tanks and they're underwater for 60 days, no sleep lost. I got a project that I was with that was underwater for 60 days. It was 70% below the pre-sale price. Ended up doing a 6x. I'm I don't care. Like I'm I'm in it until it hits my goals. It is what it is. No stress. I I tell you what, <clears throat> the only stress that I have is a stress of forgetting about some projects that I'm in. <laughs> Like I told my wife the other day, I was like, oh, honey, honey, look at this. You know, I was up, you know, I think it was like uh, 4X on a project that I, I forgot about. Somehow, it, you know, it got lost in in, in, in tra translation or, or something. Uh, it didn't make it in my cycle of, of checking in on projects. And hey, I, you know, that was a nice little surprise. Hey, but like <clears throat> what I'm getting at is I have no control over that. And neither do you. Okay. So like when you get in, you know that you're accepting the fact that it's going to either be a 2x, a 10x, or you just lost your money. And that's okay. 
Okay, that's okay. We're not going to win them all. We're not trying to win them all. <clears throat> all right, so that's uh, old Snek, Snek Inu, a little bit on Carecoin. I did want to bring up uh, Ant X. Does anybody remember Ant X? Uh, this is uh, Ant Network X. Uh, this was scouted by Metalloride. We did talk about this project um, a couple weeks back. Now, I think that uh, Metalloride might be a little surprised. Uh, it looked like they were going to delay their launch for a period of time, um, but uh, they actually had their pre sell over the weekend. And um, and I actually had forgotten about it. Goes back to you know proper proper management. Got a lot of stuff going on in life, and I totally forgot about the pre-sale. Anyway, they ended up having a pretty good pretty good pre-sale. Let's go ahead and take a look at. Um, I don't remember uh, how much they raised. I think it was a fair launch. Which again, I'm not I'm not a fan of. Uh, I'm not a fan of of fair launches on Pink Cell. Okay, I'm not a fan for that. But <clears throat> they ended up doing pretty good. They had a 50 BNB soft cap. They ended up raising 284 BNB. And what I mean by pretty good is this doesn't really matter. What matters is the chart. And uh, so here they are, close to about 24 hours post launch. Yeah, so we got a little over 24 hours post launch. They did pretty good. They did pretty good for a fair launch. R really, really happy to see this for a fair launch, actually. And so, you know, this is a project that we talked about. Okay, here is the the listing price. And uh, so it went all the way up to a uh, 2.3x. And I would guess you could probably have sold the the the, the vowel is going to be somewhere around around here uh, for a. Uh, over a 2x so right at a 2x there's a nice little easy 2x for you um you know this is a project that uh metallo ride had like i said he talked about he spoke highly of the team um he even had kind of advised them to, to push back the launch uh from a couple weeks or months ago to, to a little bit later um <clears throat> now uh i do not know this team as well as i feel like i know carecoin v2 team or carecoin team okay i don't know so you know, for me, I'm not looking at this project anymore. You know, we get to ask Metalloride his thoughts. You know, hop in there in Discord, ask Metalloride his thoughts. What are the, you know, had some short-term gains. What does he feel like the long-term gains are for this project? Uh, but uh, I don't know enough about to say if this is risky or not risky for a, for a buying the dip kind of move. But I did want to celebrate, uh, you know, celebrate this win. Um, like I said, we talked about this project a few weeks back. So if you guys, just out of curiosity, if, if you did get in this, um, you know, let me know if you guys did get in this or if you uh, you added it to your, your your volume of trades, if you paper traded, if you're watching it. Uh, just curious to know um, how, that, uh, how that played out for you. Uh, Joseph asks, what's my goal for Kara? Oh, just go for a 2x and then let the rest ride. Um, uh, depends... Uh, well, so, so one of the strategies that, uh, that I was going for, um, Joseph is, uh, uh pull, pulling out actually probably how I would handle care coin. Cause I think it has massive, massive potential is, uh, pull out 50%. Um, sorry, every, every 50% gain, pull out 20% all the way up and that way I'm able to ride I'm able to ride it all the way up and uh, you know as it exponentially grows um, I'm doing well with that and I'm not waiting for a certain 5x 10x I'm able to get some money out and move on to the next move on to the next so that's that's my personal goal for for that one I've been trying out two different strategies um, I haven't put it down on um, what I want to do, guys, is look at all the data that I've collected and all the data the auditing team has collected and, you know, look at two, look at two strategies, whether it's RIP FT, whether it's um, dollar cost averaging out, you know, dollar cost averaging in is like you, you buy, you know, whether it's based on a time frame, whether it's based on a certain pullback, you just buy in constantly. I think you could do, um, you could do the same thing with uh with with selling as well and so you know selling it selling a certain amount at certain increments 
So selling, you know, twenty percent of your bag at certain games, and that way you're making, you're getting some of your money out without having to wait for it to go all the way up, and uh, you end up still leaving free tokens in there. And at that point, you can keep doing that every, for example, every fifty percent or every hundred percent, you pull out twenty percent, and uh, that way you can keep some of the uh, keep some of the profit and ride that stuff out. Joseph says they're they're airdropping V1 holders on October sixteenth. I know there's, a, I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff going on. I did see the chart though. The chart did look like it had a bit of a, uh, a bit of a bump. When I say a bit of a bump, it looked like, um, I'll just pull this up real quick. We'll get into the calendar. <clears throat> I mean, last 24 hours, it's down 30%. So, you know, I don't know if that's, I, I have, you know, I'm not, I'm not necessarily following it. So I don't know exactly what's, uh, exactly what's causing, what's causing that. But yeah, they were having a, a pretty, pretty steady rise. You know, so if someone had bought the dip down here. Here, 80 80 percent so that's 1.8x all the way up to here we're looking at a 2.7x it's pretty awesome i mean even someone who bought the dip down here they're still up you know 70 percent so 1.7x uh yeah it, it will be curious i'll be curious to see you know to your to your point joseph uh what what happens with the airdrop to v1 you know right now they're on a downward trajectory um we'll see uh We'll see what happens when that when that goes down. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the calendar. Uh, anybody have any projects they want to take a look at before uh, before we jump in here today? Feel free to uh, drop it in chat, and we'll take a look. There was a um, there was a scout that's been doing pretty good. Um, they're posting a lot of projects, but the the results have been doing pretty good. Now the thing is, um, I I won't say uh, this this scout will still be kind of like a newer scout, okay? So we can't rely on a track record, just like if we were to look at a yellow scout. Um, but uh, it is worth it is worth pulling up one of these projects. And uh, us analyzing it together and, you know, seeing what we think and then watch how the launch plays out. You know, I think that that would be really good. So um, I skimmed through these. And so we'll try to look at two. Uh, but one of the ones that, uh, that looked pretty good was uh, Mutant Frago. I think I saw this somewhere else. Uh, Sheep asks, Vetter's price is going down lately. Any idea why? I mean, so the, the sarcastic answer is, you know, people are selling. Um, I don't think that's what you're asking, though. Um, and th why people are selling, that that's their own prerogative. I have no idea. Um, I know that the core community is buying more. So, like, from one perspective... It's easy to look at the chart going down as something bad, um, but like it has no bearing whatsoever for me personally. I know other people may feel differently. Uh, I just know what the vision is. I know where I see us going, and I know what I'm doing every week to move the ball down the field. And same thing with you guys who are here every every week. And so... When I see lower prices like that, for me personally, I see opportunity to either increase my own bag or I see opportunity for others to get a pristine <laughs> bargain <laughs> on a highly underrated community and a research tool, which is the CrowdX calendar. So that's my personal take on that. Um, but I think people are... Uh, I think some people 
one, one of the things that was said in the last couple AMAs were that some people don't understand, some people don't care to understand, and um, some people are going to leave. And this is, in a way, it's it's kind of like um, it's it's kind of like shaking the tree, you know. Uh, some people want to get off the bus because they probably shouldn't be in the crypto space anyway. I mean, let's let's be real. Um, some people want to get off the bus because they shouldn't have never been here in the first place. Perhaps they took loans out to invest in crypto. Perhaps, which is incredibly risky. <laughs> I mean, like. Every session that we're on, I talk about how none of this is a guarantee. Okay? Now, there, there is one thing that's a little bit different with Vetter compared to other projects is us. Right now, if you're listening to this right now, we, we can impact the price. We can impact the chart. We can impact the community. We can impact the value. And I don't mean by us buying more. What I mean by is, is, is us crowdsourcing, collaborating, working together, putting our resources together and reaching more people. We can accomplish that. We can move the needle. With other projects, if you were heavily invested time-wise and emotionally, you could do the same thing. But I'm just saying, if you're here every week, you're emotionally invested. You're here. And I see that and I see you in the chats and I see you in Discord. So one, I just want to say, hey, thank you for your contribution. Thank you for sharing and and um, and speaking life and vision and value into the community because we are all creating this ecosystem. And I appreciate the fact that you are creating, like I said, light and vision and positivity in this space and uh, we can impact the culture. We can shift the culture. Um, and together we can all, you know, carry the ball down the field. Okay. Uh, Kim asks, uh, yes, it's on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, yet we were live on Thursday. Um, so just so you guys know, there's a channel now in discord. So if you go down here, um, there's a channel right here, live sessions. And so, uh, one, there's always going to be the live session for the day. Okay. It's always going to be this one right here, the live link. You'll always be able to find the link there or uh, just make sure you're subscribed to YouTube. And then at the time of the stream, hop on the YouTube and go to the channel. You'll find it there. And two under the boards here, here's how we're going to work this out. This is going to be pretty cool guys. So what this is, is um, you can come in here and you can uh, create a new post. Okay, and if you want to have a project for us to review, you just click project and then enter the project name and then enter um, the DAP link and a description on why you like the project and we'll go over it on the live session. Um, if it's a topic, so for example, that, you know, there's been requests of, hey, can we go over voting or hey, can we go over the volume of launches or things like that? You just click topic, put in the topic and then why you want to cover X, Y, Z topic and what your questions are for that specific topic. And last but not least, suggestions. If you have a suggestion, so for example, Kim's given me suggestions before, it's highly, highly valuable and I appreciate it so much. So if you ever have suggestions on how we could do better as a community or what we could do better uh, on the live sessions, you could drop a suggestion in here and we can see how we could implement it on the calls. So for example, Kim had said, hey Ryan, you know, you get to get much better at asking people to hit the like button. And I'm like, Kim, you're absolutely right. So in that moment, you know, I'm like, okay, right now, here, let's test it out. So right now, if you're enjoying what we're doing so far, if you like these live sessions, go ahead and hit the like button. Let's see if we can get, uh, let's see if we can get 15 likes. Uh, 15 right now we're at five likes so we can get 15 before the uh, the session is over okay and that was something that Kim had recommend uh, reminded me of you know hey remember to ask for the likes because it helps out the YouTube algorithm which then more people can see uh, the topics that we discuss on these sessions so that's how that set that 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 uh, that session um, this section works okay so we have our own little live session here okay and that's again that's how we can all work together and uh, and collaborate and do some good stuff together. So, uh, project we're going to take a look at real quick is uh, Mutant Frogo. Uh, the reason um, 
uh, this one stands out is uh, the language, Frago. I think that that is, um, it's kind of hypey, kind of creative. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how that plays out, but right away that catches my attention, okay? And so let's go ahead and take a look at the website. Oh, boom, just like that, we're up to 14 likes. Ask and you shall receive. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. All right, so we got Mutant Frogo. So right away, this site is super busy, but it's cool. Okay, it is super busy, but it's cool. And I can tell that there was some intentionality behind what's going on here. Okay, um, we would not be able to create this on our own. I think it would it would it would take some resources. It would take some people with some skill sets. Now it's not loading like incredibly fast, but like this is very custom. Um, it's got a its own kind of feel and vibe to it, and I'm I'm digging it for that reason. Um, I mean, there's some things that you know I'm not gonna totally critique it, but like there's some things that could be better. But like it's definitely got its own kind of vibe and feel with what's going on here. Okay. So <clears throat> utilities, we have NFTs, hold to earn, jump to earn. Let's see what hold to earn is. The best earning stream in all of DeFi. Daily revenue earnings, tradable subscriptions, mutant app testing inclusion, year round access. Oh, also, uh, as I'm reading this, they have hop on it. Uh, that's a good uh, play on words with uh, Crit and Tribalism. I mean, this is about like frogs. So like hopping is, I like that. Uh, there was a, I thought I saw a, a tongue somewhere. Let's see if I can find the tongue again. Oh, right there. Oh yeah, the tongue ate the fly. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, right there. Like there's there's some cool stuff behind this. Again, legitimacy of the project, you know, time will tell. Uh, but there's some intentionality behind what they're what they're creating here. Uh, I'm not I'm not fully understanding how the token interacts with the utilities. But yeah. Now I clicked on jump to earn and it took me down here. jump to earn i wonder if that's like a move to earn kind of thing uh i'm not necessarily a fan of those types of projects i think like the first person out who does a really good job but i think sometimes people just jump on the bandwagon uh, but uh, truthfully i don't have the data to, to back that up there could be some other ones that are good but let's see what this is <clears throat> jump to earn Okay, there you can just get to be on the wait list, it looks like. Okay, let's go back to Mutant Frago. Okay, so we have the team here. And they are not, uh, currently, they're not fully docs. We just have, like, the Im NFT images and stuff. Um, so we don't know much about them, but maybe we can find something about them on the white paper. Hey, we got 16 likes. There we go, guys. There we go. Dream, declare, deliver. All right. Uh, let's look at the team. We're looking for the team here. Okay, it doesn't say much about the team. It's kind of interesting they put team and project together. Here's, here's the, 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 the snippet about the team. The Mutant Frogo team is comprised of individuals who have been in the crypto sector for multiple years and have established relationships and connections with one another throughout their time either working or investing in projects within the space. This is the first venture of this team and every member of Mutant Frogo team plays an important and specific role. So it's the first project within the project to ensure 
constant growth and success of many moving parts. The team is based globally, allowing 24-7 lines of communication to be established with investors and for several language nationality groups to be offered, allowing for broader diversification among holders with the decades worth of experience accrued throughout all members. We're eager to prove ourselves to make the Mutant Frago a collection known and enjoyed worldwide. Okay, so it doesn't really say as much, tell us much about the team. So they may as well just be um, anonymous because we don't know anything about them. Okay, we don't know anything about them. Now, they do have a video on the website. And you guys know I like to check out the stats there. Oh my goodness. I don't know if you guys can hear that. So this is an ad playing by Surtech. And like, I think you can see the screen there, but it says you invested time and money in building that cool next web three project, but no one cares. <laughs> this is something we've talked about before. How is it that sometimes the scamming projects actually raise more funds than the actual legit project? It's because scammers are great marketers and they can pry on people's emotions um, in a not, not good way. So Anyway, so we have uh, over 600 views on this video. Uh, it's been up for seven days, so just about a week, 600 views. Uh, 352 likes. Now, that's a little suspicious, um, only because like count is typically not 50%. And the comment count is actually kind of high, too. Comment count's around, what, like 30%, 30, uh, you know, 33% or something. Um so you know this could be this could be botted. Um, I do see a lot of, and I don't I don't mean this to be stereotypical, but there's a lot of Asian profiles that kind of just look like they're fake. I mean we got like a standard, we got the standard look for the guys and gals in these images, and um, so I'm curious about the legitimacy of of these comments um so you know either they're running ads in 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 that area or uh you know these these could be botted now one of the things i'm kind of curious about is you may have seen they have 8600 subscribers that's a lot that's a lot of subscribers and um what makes that a little weird to me is 8,600 subscribers, but the video only has 600 views over the last almost seven days. That seems a little bit off. That seems a little bit off. Um, so I'm kind of I'm kind of curious about that. Um, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, right shoot photo says Zuma game vibes. Love that game. I'm not familiar with that game. Is that a good Is that a good crypto game? Is it Is it crypto or is it uh, not crypto? I'm I'm not sure. I'm not familiar. Okay, phase one, the experiment. 10,000 mutant froggos have sprung loose from the lab. Each froggo is uniquely comprised and yields various means of passive income for those who are brave enough to capture them. The hunt is on for the first wave of 1,000 mutant froggos. The experiment. The gathering. Scientists have observed these mutant creatures and studied their profitable nature closely. It is now time that they seek and gather adventurers from all across the land. Those who dare to capture a mutant frago embark upon a once-in-a-lifetime journey at obtaining lifelong financial prosperity. I, I'm digging, I'm digging the, uh, the story here. It's like a Candyland vibe. My girls would love this. <laughs> the evolution. Frogga is a tool of choice for every hunter and is used to acquire all mutant froggos. Procure an early stockpile of froggo to help with your hunting. Okay, so I guess you get to have the token. You get to have the froggo token, which is what's launching, which is used to acquire all the mutant froggos. Procure an early stockpile of froggo to help with your hunting. Okay. Spring to action. 
owner calculate their Frago NFT rarity and the Frago profits set to be yielded through the use of the Mutant Labs database dashboard. That's a lot of information. <laughs> the Mutant Marketplace allows for holders to actively buy, sell, trade their Fragos with other collectors. Fortification. Every Frago owner has total control of their profits and NFTs in the palm of their hands, allowing for broader ecosystem additions to be easily introduced and incorporated. This is this is cool. Like there's some energy that was put into this. The introduction of newly amplified modes of the earning for all NFT token holders guaranteed to innovate the space and further drive overly project utility and value. There's a comic as well. Oh man, I mean, I'm I'm not a comic fan. But I just appreciate um, I appreciate uh, the fact that I don't know. There, there, there's I feel like there's time and energy put into this. You know, we've looked at some websites before that look pretty cheap and crummy, and like I don't know, this one has a different vibe to me. Has a different vibe. What do you guys think of the website so far? Okay, so we looked a little bit about the website of the roadmap of the team. Uh, there's some utilities here. Um, so utilities are coming from the revenue. Okay, so um, uh, let's look at the uh, Telegram. Mutant Frago. Not crypto at all. Okay, yeah, I, I wasn't familiar with the, with the game. With the uh, with the Zuma game, all right. So we got forty thousand members in Telegram. That's pretty. That's pretty juicy. Let's go ahead and join the group. Unmute. All right. Well done. Once upon a time, one thousand mutant froggos were found in the forest. It is said that. Catching one of these magical frog NFTs will lead to untold riches and treasures. Yeah, Kim, it's definitely, you know, and it goes back to one of the things Mike said, you know, is there substance here or are they just, you know, a good show? A good show, you know? I think I saw, oh, right here, uh, let's see. Mint of Mutant Frogo NFT will take place following the launch of Frogo. Launch in Mint on October 18th. Mint price, 1 BNB worth of Frago. Based upon launch price of... Oh, uh, 1 BNB plus that. Okay. So based on launch price. All right, so let's take a look at the pin messages. We got 66 pin messages. There's not much interaction on these, though. So I'm, I'm, a, little, I'm a little skeptical. Okay, I'm a little skeptical. We got 40,000 members, but we only have five engagements on a post that was from today. That was today. That was this morning. Maybe there's some more posts people are excited about. There's Okay, so here's our most, most engagement. We got uh, 17, and that was on the, yesterday. Let's go all the way up, see what we can find. September 19th, the first pinned post? Surely, surely not. That's that's about three weeks ago. Okay, September 15th is the first post that we can find, but we may be able to find something more. Let's see here. Let's see if we can go back down here, see what we can see. Oh, what do we see over here? What happened on the 28th? Anybody notice this? Look at all those good projects on the 28th. That's a bummer. That's a bummer. They got some bots going on here. Looks to be heavily botted. And we just have days. Days and days of good projects. Hundreds of good projects. Hundreds upon hundreds. Okay. So that's a bit of a bummer. Um, a bit of a bummer about uh, about that. 
Uh, Mutant Frogo team has secured KYC verification. Having a solid KYC procedure in place is a safeguard in any project that must not be overlooked. Here at Mutant Frogo, we work to ensure our eager community investors have peace in mind knowing that the team is fully KYC'd and the founding members consist of fully doxed veterans within the space. <clears throat> Here is the KYC verification on IDOPreSales.com. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go back here to Telegram. Um, all right. So pretty, pretty bummed that there's a lot of bots in here. Pretty bummed about that. So they are doing some AMAs. Um, it, it, I guess it kind of makes sense, though, about the bots. I mean, there wasn't a lot of engagement on um, on the posts. So I guess that makes sense. Looks like they did a uh, AMA with Pink Cell. Let's see if we have anything else. Any other AMAs? Oh, it's the same one. October 6th. Okay, what happened? Anything happened after the 6th? Anything other than Pink Cell? Okay, so we got Jim Capital. They had an AMA with Jim Capital. So we got Pink Cell, Jim Capital. We got uh, Coin TV Chat. Okay, so we got we got three, three AMAs. Again, they're keeping their even their AMAs. the The graphics for the AMAs they're keeping their graphics um, consistent with the website design. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm trying not to get enrolled in the in the overall design because like some other stuff is <clears throat> is a little. Uh, is a little uh, I'm a little unsure about the the bots and the lack of engagement our very own mutant frogo CEO will be doxing himself publicly in every AMA to make sure everyone knows that our team is dedicated into making this project soar high even past the moon it's rare for projects to have doc CEOs and team it's even rare to find an amazing project with great utilities that has a team that's willing to and committed to building a trustworthy connection with the community. Join us on our next AMA to catch Will live. I guess his name is Will. Uh, make sure to ask him questions. Okay. All right. So what I'm curious about. Well, let's see if we can find Pink Cell. I think Pink Cell. So this is going to be a fair launch. Mutant Frogo fair launch. Mutant Frogo is the best earning stream well developed project over a year. Okay, so English is not doesn't appear to be their first language. First project with holding NFT and earn native token system. 10,000 unique NFT ready to mint. Live NFT gallery, hold to earn, jump to earn, mutant mobile app already live, mutant comic volume one out on the web, based dev with solid marketing, CMC pre listed, Binance NFT, Bitmart listing confirmed, low tax 1%, bonus rewards 0 to 500 BNB, 30% bonus. I suppose this is based on um, how much they raise. They raise zero to 500 BNB, 30% bonus, 500 to 1500, 25% bonus, 1500 to 2500, 20% bonus, 
and then uh, 2,500 to 5,000 10% bonus. It's going to start on the 14th, so we got about three days. There is an airdrop. Curious what the airdrop is for. Air. Airdrop. Oh, okay. That's it. Earn up to 60,000 worth of Frago for 1,000 winners. Get the chance to earn up to 60,000 worth of Frago in one contest alone November 7th. What, uh, not sure what you get to do to qualify for that, but... Okay, so one other thing I wanted to look up, just out of curiosity. MutantFrago.com Kim, we're right on the same we're on the same wavelength, Kim. That's exactly where I was headed. So the website's 30 days old. Creation was on 910, so that's literally a month ago. Okay? That was a month ago. Um Yeah, I'm curious about that. Uh, the reason I'm curious about that is I wonder where these graphics came from. Because, like, Telegram started, you know, a few days, supposedly a few days after the website was, was, was created. There's some pretty detailed graphics here. I wonder if, if is this like a knockoff? And I don't I don't want to speak ill. Uh, you know, this is straight ignorance, okay? I I this is just I have no idea. That that's what I'm saying, Kim. That's I, I feel the same way, Kim. It feels like um this sure is a lot of stuff they've done in a very short period of time. Okay? Um Anybody know Yeah, you know, sheep code. I'm I'm with you, man. I I won't start a project until um, I mean, I'll buy my domain name. Like, <clears throat> so me. I, and I don't know if this is the right way to do this or not. But you you guys, if you guys have done other projects before, but like, I will think of my idea for a project, and then I will see if my domain name is available, and then I'll buy it, and then I go to work on the creation of the project, and so. Um, meaning for me, I put a lot of importance and significance on having a, a clean, crisp domain name. <laughs> um, and so, you know, Sheepcoat say from my understanding before they even think of a project name, they have to see if the website's available. Yeah. I mean, that's the way I think about it. I would not start a project and then try to find a domain name to fit it. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm just kind of wondering uh, you know, does anybody know, I think there's, I think there's computer programs or websites where like you can enter a, um, an image and it can like recognize what the image is from, you know, like for example, we could take this image and upload it somewhere and it could tell us like, is this unique or has it been seen somewhere else before? Um, and you know, I don't want to, I'm, I'm not by any means saying that this project is like a knockoff or it stole someone else's stuff. Uh, right now, I'm just 50-50. Uh, there's some things that look really, really cool about the project, like the website, the graphics, this storyline, the comic. Um, all that sounds really great. But there's some other things that seem way off. Okay? There's other things that seem way off. So, for example, 
Telegram only being a little over 30 days old, 40,000 members, heavily botted, website being 30 days old. Seems a little, I don't know, something seems like it's missing. How far along is the jump to earn development? The team has begun the initial setup on the jump to earn and simultaneously determining the best mode for how it will correlate to the standard of move to earn concepts. But with our, but with ours being jump to earn, we will likely have set routines that will work more finely overall. That's that was a lot of words. There are many motion earning projects that started over the last year so the mutant frago team continues to study the development and conceptual paths to make sure that when jump to earn is finalized and integrated accordingly to our roadmap that we'll have the best working version possible for our dedicated investors interesting interesting so so far what do you guys think what do you guys think about the project? Good and bad. You know, just everyone share. You know, go ahead and share your thoughts. What are the things that you like about it? What are the things that you're kind of unsure about it? I think there's going to be a big Twitter. Yeah, 24,000 followers. <clears throat> that's, that's a lot. Ton of engagement on Twitter. Oh, here's Will. Here's the CEO, Will. Uh, yeah, the biggest curiosity for me is how did they create all this stuff in such a short period of time? That's what I'm curious about. Let's see what we got on YouTube. Let's see what we have on YouTube. Jump to earn. So we got Mutant Frago and Jump to Earn. Mutant Frago. So it's already coming up in the search, which is good. All right, so they're paying some influencers. Oh, here's our, uh, okay, so I would be very, I would just, I would, I would suggest you guys just look, if you ever see this guy talking about a project, a sin Noak, just watch to see how the project does. Okay. Just watch to see how the project does, you know, as a, as a community, I think it's, it's worth us, you know, figuring out. Um, you know, I haven't taken the time to, to, to collect all the data myself. Um, but I've, I've had a suspicion before that there's, there's, there's a network of influencers that, um, I've said this before on another project, there's a net, network of influencers that I don't know, I'm not for sure on, uh, how valuable they are. And I mean, specifically this number right here, I think it's, that's totally botted 23,000 views. Totally bought it. Totally bought it. Okay. Now, so far, I have not seen. I mean, huge community, but like the community. I mean, let's go back here. So, like, I'm in. I'm in Telegram. Okay, and I joined Telegram. But like in the last 30 minutes, no one has said anything. This is a group of 40,000 members and no one has said anything in the last 30 minutes. OK, 
Okay. Yeah, Jackie says, I like it. If I knew about the team, I wouldn't hesitate. It has a good feel to it. It has a good feel. There's just there's some things in the gap for me. Um, Kim says, uh, super overhyped. It looks like a bunch of bot BS. Um, Jackie says, for a tiny amount of capital, ice cream project. Oh, for sure. Meaning risk, risk versus reward. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, Jackie, that's a great way to look at it. At risk, risk versus reward. You know, are there, and this, this, this is the beauty. Okay. This guys, this right here is a beauty of where we're at in this space is, is like, you're finding your own risk tolerance. Okay. So like once we've eliminated the possibility that is it a scam? Okay. That's off the table. Okay. If you can filter in and figure out, okay, hey, you know what? I believe this is not a scam. Now we're simply talking about, is it worth your point one, your point two, your point five BNB? Is it worth the risk? Are you are you willing to say, you know what? I'm willing to risk my point one because it checks these boxes because it could be a two x, it could be a five x, it could be a ten x project. Okay, and that's that's what we're talking. That that is literally the conversation that we're having right now. And this was what makes it so individual. Um, and this is the beauty of the crowdsource model because like we can all share ideas and thoughts and maybe something that uh, you know one of us hadn't thought of, you know, someone else is chiming in, which is super helpful. Super helpful. Carl says, uh, like what you said, something's missing. Yeah, something feels just slightly off. You know, think back to um, think back to to Carecoin, to Crypto Legions, to um, Petoverse, uh, there were a, there were a handful of, of projects that had some excitement to it, and you know right now there's not much going on here. There's not much going on here, um, and then like like we said on on uh, on on Twitter, there's definitely not a lot going on here. Um, there's a lot going on in the projects that they 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 promote or the posts they promote, but like beyond that, there's not a lot there's not a lot going on. What makes this project a little bit different is because of how good the graphics look, the, the design and stuff like that. If it was like Snack Tech, you know, it'd be easy. But what's making this challenging is it has some of the stuff that I like and I look for. And again, does that mean it's because it's legit? Or are they trying to uh, you, you know, use a little, bit, a little bit of smoke and mirrors um, to, uh, to create an illusion of something? Who knows? Who knows? But it comes down to risk and reward. Okay. Uh, Kim says, I don't like that. We don't know anything about the team. For sure. Sheepgo says, I'm exactly with you, Ryan. Good graphics, good story. But the bots are what's making me question it. But they said it's been worked on for a year. But then the NFT projects are very liquid. Kim says, as you can compare that non-chatter with how much Vetter had in chat. Absolutely. Yeah. So the, the biggest question that I have is... Oh, let's uh, let's go back to the website. Let's see if we can see the if, if there's an artist on the team. I mean, you know, maybe they just outsourced. Okay, so mutant art director Thomas. So okay, so these guys work together. Angelica and Thomas work together for the for the art designs. I mean, maybe with the NFT market being slower, maybe with the, the crypto market being slower, um, they were able to crank out a lot of work or get a lot of this stuff done because of the demand being different compared to like a year ago. I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I man, the website just makes me feel such a certain way, like such a strong way and that I like it a lot. But then when we look further, there's just things that are missing. Things that are missing. This is a good one to watch, though. This is a good one to look into. So, guys, we have. I close the. Uh, I think I close the. Uh, yeah, I close pink cell. Um, same thing with this lady. I think this is the same lady I brought up on a previous project. 
So what I suspect about, I don't know about all these influencers, this lady and uh, this dude right here, I, I suspect that um, they are part of an influencer network that is highly botted and either projects either either they're ripping people off either they're in cahoots with the project team and you know the project pumps and then dumps or that these influencers are ripping off the project <laughs> meaning um meaning you know they're showing this project hey look man we can get you twenty three thousand views but like it's all bogus and fake so i don't know there's some type of shenanigan going on with these influencers i don't know what it is um but it, it is it is definitely worth uh watching and adding to your volume of launches as in like documenting this stuff like i'm pretty sure Like, I mean, her videos, you know, they all get the same amount of views and I don't know. I, I'm, I'm highly skeptical, highly skeptical of uh, the quality um, of, uh, of these projects. But, you know, we'll see. I don't have enough. I don't have enough numbers, data. It hasn't been a priority of mine to uh, to dial it in and give you an answer. Um, maybe, maybe I will, maybe I'll spend, you know, if you guys want to work with me on that, let me know. We can put our heads together and sift through this. Cause this would be really valuable, really valuable to know. Uh, yeah. So this is what I talked about last week with, uh, with Everchain. I don't even know if Everchain launched. Let's just see. I have uh, guys, I have no clue what I'm about to find right now. I have no clue what I'm about to find. Um, I, I could look silly right now. I could look right right now. It's, it's a mystery. <laughs> We're going to find out together. We're going to find out together. Um, <clears throat> staking will be going live within the next few hours. Keep an eye on the announcements. Okay, so maybe they launched. Okay, so let's see if we can find Pink Cell. Buy. Finance. Okay, here is their pre sell. Uh, it may be a fair launch. Who knows? It was a pre-sell. Okay, so it was a pre-sell. And it ended back on the uh, 7th. Let's see if they launched. This is the... Um, this is the token address via pink cell. It's the same. I have no clue what the chart is going to look like. Drum roll. Drum roll, please. Man, they're down 30% in the last 24 hours, too. Just like Caracoin. What's up with that, guys? What's up with that? Okay, so let's, let's go to, let's pull up this chart here. All right, and let's see what the pre-sale price was. Okay, pre-sale and listing price are the same. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to find where we started. So right here, pre-sale price is the same as listing. Okay, these numbers are the same, which means you can go to the chart and you go down to you go down to the one minute if you want to get it really really accurate. Sometimes it's kind of hard to do when there the there's the the project is old, but like up here. So what happened is. Price started right here. Okay, price started right here. There was a little green candle, and then price started going down, and it created that red wick, and that price went all the way down here and closed right here, and this is where this candle came. So that's how that that's how that works, in case you were curious. Alright, so this project, while we didn't do a full-on review of this project for Everchain, um, I did throw out uh, watch this girl because I'm not sure what's really going on here. Okay. Um, but they, like I said, they raised 470 BNB. That's a pretty big raise. Um, but project does not look like it did all that great. Okay. Um, so within the first, within the first 24 hours, um, it was not profitable within the next, 
Right now we're two days post launch. Okay, so uh, it's it's definitely struggling. Now this has no indication. This obviously has no indication on, I mean, the all-time high was 11%. Uh, this has no indication on like any other projects that she does. I'm just simply saying, I think there's something going on here to, someone's, some, someone's getting influenced. Let me put it like this. Someone is getting influenced by these videos. Whether it's the person buying these tokens, they're getting influenced, or it is the project hiring this person to do videos for them. They're getting influenced. And what I mean, uh, negatively influenced. Um, you know, I don't know how much money she made. I don't know how much money her company made. But like, someone got bamboozled with this deal. And uh, I think that it's a ongoing, it's an ongoing thing. Personal opinion, take it for what it, take it for what it's worth. So with that, with that, um, now going back to Mutant Frago, they don't have this. This they don't have. They had their own video on 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 the on the uh, on the website. Now they did have. Um, they did have. Uh, she actually did a video for them, so you know uh, that is. Oh no, she didn't do it. Okay, good. But our, our homeboy up here did though. He did do Mutant Frago. Okay. I don't know why this video popped up. Actually, that's actually kind of funny that this video did pop up. So we, we're literally talking about Mutant Frago. And I have found with multiple YouTube accounts, um, sometimes while my videos are unrelated, Somehow Google, I mean, Google knows everything, <laughs> but like somehow my non-related, non-connected YouTube accounts posted by separate channels, separate topics, sometimes show up as related videos to each other. And here is a project called Waif Inu and Research Mutant Frago and everything else is about relatively about Mutant Frago, but we've got Waif Inu popping in here. Now, is that, is that YouTube trying to tell us, hey, there's other crypto pre-sales? Or is, you know, I don't know. It, 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 I don't know. It seems a little weird, uh, especially when you have relevant, relevant co content down here. Um, so anyway, you know, a bit, bit of a tangent there, but, you know, just that's some of the things that I, I look for and I see or, or you know, try to decim uh, December, try to decipher um, as I'm looking at, uh, as I'm looking at projects. So like I said, we got a little bit of time before uh, a little bit of time before um, you know this project gets going I think it's definitely worth looking at and like like we said you know it, it comes down to risk risk management and um, you know when you pull the right now is when you have all the control do your due diligence now do your research now ask your questions now get people in the community looking at it now and then um, because once you enter that pre-sale once you enter you know, buy the dip or buy at launch, you know, all the control is gone at that point. Okay, all the control is gone at that point. Uh, yes, Kim, um, the, the, that, is, that is a possibility. Uh, what I find strange, though, is just uh, this is a really specific, I mean, at the end of the day, <clears throat> you know, YouTube and Google, they have their shenanigans, they play their games, and sometimes, you know, the games change, but uh, in my opinion, in a perfect world, the way uh, the way YouTube would work is showing relevant content, and um, all this is relevant because all this is talking about Mutant Frago, and so even if she had Mutant Frago in her tags, which you know she might, let me let me look. We can see her tags here. Let me let me pull this up. I'll show you her tags right here. That's weird. Uh, 
I mean, these are the hashtags that she used, but these are not the tags that I was I was looking for. Um, so I have this software up here that gives me video insights, so I can like tell you know what's what's going on, and and oftentimes, let's just see if this one will work. Oftentimes, it will show me. So right there, those are the these are the tags that this user is using. I'm sorry, keywords, not tags, keywords. I'm sorry. Um, these are the keywords uh, going into the uh, um, you know when you when you upload a video and things like that. Um, but yeah, uh, that, yeah. So it's kind of weird that her video. So even more so, even more so, I'm calling out bogus on this video because it's not even it doesn't even have it doesn't even have the tags like she has no tags in her video she has hashtags in the description but that's different anyway don't want to go down this rabbit hole too far uh but uh the whole the whole moral of the story what i'm hitting at is you know it'd be it'd be curious i'd be curious to see you know what's going on uh with these with these so you know if you ever want to put a little bit of time into it we can put our heads together and connect some dots and, and help some people out. <clears throat> but, uh, so mutant Frago, really I'm torn. I'm torn. Um, you know, we got a nice, fantastic looking website. Um, they check a lot of boxes from that perspective. Um, really has me like engaged in like, I want to look at more and like, I'm excited. And then you start looking at other stuff and stuff starts falling apart. Uh, for example, uh, YouTube video with 600 views, but half the amount of comments, half the amount of 30% comments and 50% likes. That's not normal. Um, also, 8,500 subscribers. That's not normal um, with only this amount of views. Um, the website, like I said, fantastic looking website. But then you got Telegram with 40,000 members, and uh, and and a lot of them are botted, and nothing is going on in Telegram. Like very little is going on in Telegram. We'll just go back to Mutant Frago here. Oh, right here. And so, you know, since since we've been on, um, one person posted one thing. So, like, literally in 50 minutes, one person has sent a message in a group of 40,000. Uh, in the pinned messages, there's hardly any engagements. Uh, three likes here, four... Right there, we got eight in a group of 40,000. You know, come on, that, that doesn't even make sense. And then over here on Twitter, same thing, 24,000 followers on Twitter, but hardly anything going going on. So uh, those are the things that uh, kind of make this, uh, I don't know, I'm curious, um, but unsure. Unsure. So uh, the thing that, that I would probably do if I was like super interested, um, I would start chatting in this group just to see how quickly they're going to respond. Um, I'd have some great questions uh, to ask and uh, see what the answers are, how quickly I get those answers. Um, you know, like, how long did it take to design the, the image, the graphics? Um, you know, I think that that'd be, I'd be curious about that. Uh, the fact that the website is only 10 days, or not 10 days, 30 days old, Telegram 30 days old. Um, now that the Twitter was from last December, so that's the oldest thing that we've seen so far. But they could have just changed information on Twitter, I believe. Um, could have changed it to something else. So that right there, guys, is uh, is Mutant Frago. Uh, like I said, I'm I'm really torn. I'm really in the middle. Um, you know, and this 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 is this is the part where you can control it. This is the part where you can do your due diligence and. You know, see if it fits your risk tolerance. Get your questions answered to see if it's more of a pro than a con. And uh, proper money management, proper uh, risk tolerance, and you're good to go. Um, so definitely a project to add to the watch list. Um, add it to your volume of launches. See how it goes. See if your concerns are valid. Uh, see if that stuff matters um, for uh, for this particular project. You know, was there a certain red flag that you saw? Did it play out on, on, on launch day? Did it play out with the project? That's the whole purpose of uh, doing a volume of launches and developing your KSP. So with that, we're going to wrap it up. Hope that that was helpful. Hope you guys got some uh, good insights into what we talked about and there was some value that was uh, dropped and received.
So with that, I'll end like I always do. Life can be short. So for those that you care and love, let them know you care and love them. Hey, I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for holding the space, for creating the space uh, here and in Discord, you know, for sharing um, intentional um, positivity, uh, being a light, spreading the vision. You know, we are creating this space and I'm truly thankful and grateful that we're here together. So with that, I will see you in Discord and I will see you next time. Bye for now.